Next, sex education will be mandatory for all secondary school pupils from next year and all primary school children will be taught about relationships, keeping safe on the internet and looking after their own mental health. It's the first change to government guidelines on sex education in two decades. So yeah, I mean this builds on the consultation, actually a really big consultation with parents, with expert organisations and with schools about making um, relationships education in primary, relationships and sex education in secondary and health education in both, making those universal through schools. Of course most schools do aspects of this uh, already, uh, but we're updating the guidance. It's about almost 20 years actually since sex education guidance was last updated and you know the world has changed a lot uh, in that period of time. Not not least with the internet so it's good that we're updating uh, all this today secondary school pupils will be taught about the risks of sharing private photos and the impact of viewing explicit or harmful content on the internet as well as grooming female genital mutilation forced marriage and domestic abuse today's announcement comes on the day MPs will debate a petition by parents who say they should still be able to remove their children from sex education classes if they choose. From next year, the new plans say parents only have that right up until the age of 16. Let's talk to Lucy Emerson, who is the director of the Sex Education Forum. She welcomes the introduction of compulsory relationships education. Also with us, Izzy Montague, who is a mum from Croydon. She challenged her child's school over a Pride event all pupils were expected to be involved in. And she believes it should be a parent's choice whether to teach children about LGBT issues in particular. Thank you both for coming on the programme. Um, Lucy, briefly, first of all, relationships education for primary school children, what will they learn? It's learning about your family, who cares for you, about friendships, about bullying, um, about staying safe online, about what a healthy relationship really looks like um, and how to get help if something was wrong. And in secondary school, relationships and sex education, what would that involve? So building on those foundations from primary and learning more about intimate relationships and then the broader aspect of sexual health. Um, so as a child develops, just going step, step by step with them. Izzy, what do you think of this? Um, I mean, on the broad scale, it sounds perfectly fine. However, I think the idea of teaching children anything about um, relationships isn't down to the school. We shouldn't be using resources for schools to do this. But on what grounds? What would you say to that, Lucy? We really need parents to be involved at home too. So I, I really hope you are taking that on and, and educating children at home is so important. Children want to learn from parents and from school and they learn something a bit different from each. In, in a school environment, children are having relationships, friendships, um, that a school is a place where there are relationships live all the time and, and schools need to provide that guidance and it needs to be consistent so that if a child does need to get help at an early age, they know that it's safe and they can do so. I understand that, but how is it any different to what is already in place at the moment? Why does it need to change? Well, when we ask children and young people, they say there are massive gaps in their education and what they've learned has been too little and too late. And actually children are leaving primary school not able to identify behaviour that's abusive and not knowing who to turn to for help. So that's leaving children at risk um, for their mental health, for their physical well-being and safety as well. So because we don't know which child might be at risk, every child needs to get that education and they also need every parent to be involved. But unfortunately, in reality, many parents are not having open and honest conversations with their children about relationships or any other aspects of, of sex or growing up. But your, is your issue in particular, is he about uh, children being taught about or discussing in lessons same-sex relationships? Exactly. I have a problem with uh, biased agendas that go to say that things are normal when different cultures, different beliefs don't entirely believe it's you know right or normal. We have to not cause divisions in these circumstances and just stick to the facts. The facts are when we're dealing with safety, when we're dealing with crime rates or death rates, those are the things that we need to be engineering towards. However, when it comes to cases of sexual, re you know, sorry, gender reassignment and, and gender, uh, sexual orientation, that is what we should be speaking clear of, not be channeling what your opinions are about it into other people's children. 
So the schools will be required to teach um, about the law, um, about equality and about respect. So this is all about unifying our society. Um, I think every child needs to be able to respect other children and to be respected by other children in their school environment um, and in the wider society. So it's actually a unifying process here. And again, I think- Do you accept that, Izzy? No, I don't. I think I, I, I've been told quite many times that the idea of respect should be respect for everybody. Why are you targeting different relationships? Will you ever touch on polygamy, for instance? Will you ever touch on certain Islamic teachings about how many wives or, you know, are those the kind of relationships that you're teaching? Is it all relationships or is it certain relationships? Because if it's just certain relationships, that makes an agenda for you to normalise only certain people's relationships. This tweet backs you up. Uh, it's from Tavia, who says, Hi, I'm a primary school teacher. I'm also an Ahmadi Muslim. I feel that forcing relationship education on children as young as four is not in the best interests of children at that age. Some are just learning to speak uh, and take turns and share. This viewer says, yet again, we're taking away the job of parenting from the parents and putting even more pressure on the teachers. We need to train the parents so that they can do their job. Uh, Amanda says, yes, 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 we should have both relationship and sex, sex education in primary school and secondary schools because so many kids don't have it at home. Teach all kids positive relationships. This is a long overdue overhaul. And Josephine's really cross. She says, having four-year-olds know about relationships is appalling and disgusting. Leave them alone. What do you say to that, Lucy? Children know about relationships because they can see them around them all the time. They can see them at home. They are copying and learning and, and it's being modeled to them on the TV, on the internet, from the people they live with, from the people outside there, you know, on their street. Mm -hmm. So we can't say that children won't learn about relationships. They've already learned about relationships. The proposal here is to provide some consistency to get teachers trained to provide that unifying voice so that children learn to tolerate and respect, know where to get help if they need it. And I, I would say to parents, do ask to see what the school's providing because often our, it's based on fear or misunderstanding. And when parents actually see the materials, they're, they're, not, um, they're not what you'd expect. Where is the proof? Where do you have that, they, that parents are already doing this in line with what they believe in? Why is it a case that you're making it compulsory? I would fully appreciate what you're saying if it was, you know, a choice. If you were working with parents, giving parents lessons about this so they could go home and teach it to their children. But the fact that you're taking the parents' rights away to be able to teach this makes it an agenda. If you use taxpayers' money to funnel a certain ideology of what is normal and what it isn't, that makes it an agenda. You don't have the right to tell my children what kind of relationships are healthy. And so we have a certain... Izzy, and that what, is what, what will you do when this, when this comes in from next year? What will you do in terms of your own child? I mean, my, luckily, my child does go to a faith school and I've spoken to my, my um, the school that my child attains and at great lengths and they work with the parents to, to see what can be done. But if it is something, like I said, an agenda, I would have to remove my children. And how, what would you do to me then? What would be the, the legal implications to a parent like me? Will you come into our homes and arrest us? If we decided to homeschool our child, would you sit there and, and make sure that you look at everything that we're teaching our ch children? Why are so many people you know, so for and supporting the ideas that people can take parents' rights away. There are more pressing issues that are going on where I live, there's gang crimes, drugs. Why isn't this not something that m public money is being used to spend on? Why are you making it compulsory for things like this? I don't understand. Not okay. vaccinations or anything. How many parents don't vaccinate their children? Why are you not making that compulsory when there's actual mm. figures that show that children are dying, but you want to make this compulsory where there are no figures, no facts, no studies that actually show that our children will be better off by learning this or not? Thank you very much for talking to us, Izzy. Thank you for coming on the programme. Izzy Montague, uh, a mum from Croydon, and Lucy Emerson from the Sex Education Forum. Thank you very much for coming on the programme.